hi everyone in this video we will discuss on chapter 12 history india after independence a constitution is written uh, children page number 161 so we know that after india got independence we had a written constitution it takes three years uh, to form this constitution there were around uh, before designing the Indian constitution around 300 people from different parts of the country, they sit together and there, is, there was a series of debates took place to uh, uh, write down this constitution. So, let us uh, see how this is done. Between December 1946 and November 1949, around 300 Indians had a series of meetings on the country's political future. So, this is mainly required because ours was a colonial rule, we were under the colonial rule. So, each and every part to be taken care of this, it serves the ideal, uh, it should be an ideal uh, constitution for uh, that, for that we can provide equality and everyone is equally treated. For all these reasons, uh, people from different parts, uh, politi uh, political leaders, they sit together and discuss on this topic and on uh, 26 January 1950, this constitution is, uh, came into effect. Uh, so, underline this two points, the Indian constitution came into effect on 26 January 1950. So, page number 161, between December 1946 and November 1949, around 300 Indians sit together and had a series of meetings on discussion about the political future of our country. This discussions resulted in the framing of Indian constitution and it came into effect on 26 January 1950. Now, let us see the important features of Indian constitution. First point, universal adult franchisee, uh, this we are studying from class uh, 6 or 5 onwards. You all know what is universal adult franchisee, yes, so this is the all Indians got the right to vote, people above 21 years would be allowed to vote in state and national elections, underline this point, earlier this was not been given or India, Indian people have not given a right to choose their leaders. In other countries such as United Kingdom and the United States, this right has been granted in stages. So, in other countries how this was given, first only the men with property or aristocratic people have the right to vote, then men who were educated were also added on. Working class men got the vote only after a long struggle. Finally, after a bitter struggle, this also we studied uh, in civil rights movement, the American British women were granted the vote. Now, uh, soon after independence, India chose to grant this right to all its citizens regardless of gender, class or education. So, after independence, we all got the right to vote. People who are above 21 years of age are allowed to vote in both central and state elections. This is known as universal adult franchisee. Second feature is equality before the law to all citizens. This also we studied in fundamental rights. <coughs> Page number 162 underline the points children. It guaranteed equality before the law to all citizens regardless of their caste or religious affiliation. There were some Indians who wished that the political system of a new nation be based on Hindu ideals and that India itself be run as a Hindu state. They pointed to the example of Pakistan, a country created explicitly to protect and further the interest of particular religious community, the Muslims. However, the Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru was of the opinion that India could not and must not become a Hindu Pakistan. So, in India it was determined that we, we will treat all Indians as equals irrespective of her caste or religious faiths. Third one, special privileges for poorest and disadvantaged Indians. This was also a serious problem faced by in India. There were caste system and people were treated unequally in India in the earlier times. So, third feature of the Indian constitution was that it offered special privileges for the poorest and disadvantaged Indians. Underline this point. So, this means first they abolished the untouchability, the practice of untouchability was abolished. Then that means early Hindu temples, they were only open to higher caste, 
were thrown open to all including the former untouchables. Then after long debate the constituent assembly also recommended that a certain percentage of seats in legislatures as well as jobs in government be reserved for members of the lower caste that we can see now also there are reservations for people from lower communities. Uh, so that percentage is uh, still there still prevailing in India that people from uh, lower caste have been given certain uh, privileges or concessions in the education field as well as in the job opportunities. Now uh, third point you can also mark here along with this untouchables the Adivasis or scheduled tribes were also granted reservation in seats and jobs like the scheduled caste these Indians too had been deprived and discriminated against. This was done because in India people were treated unequally, people from lower caste were not treated by the higher caste uh, fairly. So this was the reason for providing privileges for this uh, lower caste uh, in jobs and seats. The tribals had been deprived of modern health care and education while their lands and forests had been taken away by more powerful outsiders. The new privileges granted them by the constitution were meant to make amends for this. So the new constitution changed this attitude of India towards the lower caste people. They were given certain privileges. So this is the third feature of Indian constitution. Now the constituent assembly also discussed on the powers of the levels of government. So there were discussions regarding the central government, what should be the powers given to central government and what should be the powers for state government. So underline point number, page number 163 underline the constituent assembly spent many days discussing the powers of central government versus those of the state governments. There was a strong opinion that a strong center would be in a position to think and plan for the welfare or well-being of the country as a whole, underline this point. Other members felt that the provinces should have greater autonomy and freedom. A member from Mysore feared that under the present system, democracy is centered in Delhi and it is not allowed to work in the same sense and spirit in the rest of the country. So that was the uh, situation, the strong center is required for a uh, strong nation, that was the discussion mainly. Now how the constitution solved this by uh, providing three list of subjects, the, by this, ha this problem was resolved by the constituent assembly by provide, providing three list of subjects, they are union list, state list and concurrent list. So there were three lists prepared accordingly the government can act. So the uh, children page number 164 underline the second paragraph the constitution sought to balance these competing claims by providing three lists of subjects. A union list with subjects such as taxes, defense and foreign affairs which would be the exclusive responsibility of the center. Underline this point central government will look into the uh, topics such as taxes defense and foreign affairs. State list included education health which would be taken care of principally by the states. Education health will come under state governments. Then there is also a concurrent list which uh, included subjects such as forest and agriculture in which center and states would have joint responsibility. So this paragraph you need to study how the constituent assembly provided the three list name the three list, union list, state list and concurrent list. So each one have different subjects also, this you need to study. Now another major debate in the Indian constitution or assembly were about the languages, which language should be taken as our official language. So most of the people have the opinion that once British go, we should uh, throw out this language also, English should not be there, the main language or official language should be Hindi. But people from south, they were not that much fluent in Hindi. They said if you uh, keep on insisting on Hindi, then we may uh, form another state. We will not join with the country. So we are going to discuss now. So another major debate was about the language, page number 164, underline third paragraph. Many members believed that English language should leave India with the British rulers. Its place, they argue, should be taken by Hindi. 
Now, those who did not speak Hindi, uh, you know, in India has different languages, especially when you come to South, they don't have that much of access to Hindi. So, uh, they have a different opinion. Speaking in the assembly, Titi Krishnamajari conveyed a warning on behalf of the people of the South, some of whom threatened to separate from India if Hindi was imposed on them. They said, we will move separately if Hindi will be taken as the official language. A compromise was finally arrived at, namely that while Hindi would be the official language of India, English would be used in court, the services and communication between one state and another. So English is a uniform language, everyone, everyone know this language, so people decided that courts then for communication purposes and in the services, in the offices we can use English as the language, while Hindi is considered as the official language of India. Now, who are the main or people who contributed in framing the Indian constitution? That is in the next paragraph. The most important role was played by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, who was the chairman of the drafting committee and under whose supervision the document was finalized. Underline this sentence, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was the chairman of the Indian constitution or drafting committee. Now, Dr. Ambedkar pointed out that political democracy had to be accompanied by economic and social democracy. Giving the right to vote would not automatically lead to the removal of other inequalities such as between rich and poor or between upper and lower caste with the new constitution, he said. So, what, what he said is, like we, we, we already said that equality is given. So, mainly you can see equality in giving votes, all are treated equally, above 21 years of age, everyone can vote in India. So, what he said is, along with this, uh, we should uh, economically and social democracy should also be there. This means, there should be removal of other inequalities such as uh, rich and poor, between rich and poor, underline this, or between upper and lower caste. With the new constitution, what he want is that, India was going to enter into a life of contradictions. In politics, we will have equality and in social and economic life, we will have inequality. This was a serious problem faced in India during that time. So, what he said, so he, although we recognized in politics the principle of one man, one vote and one value, in our social and economic life, we shall, by reason of our social and economic structure, continue to deny the principles of one man, one value. So, that was a major concern for uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, even though we, are, we say we are all equal in front of law, there still exists what the problem of inequality between rich and poor, between the caste. So, this was also need to be removed or economic and social democracy should be installed in along with this. You can still see that in India, there is, uh, there is still in present times also we can see what there is inequality of rich and poor caste still exist in different parts of India. So, children please go through these two uh, pages, uh, page number from 161 onwards. Uh, please underline the important points, uh, how the constitution is framed, features of Indian constitution. Uh, then the topic discussed was how the powers of central government and state government was divided. Uh, now the three list, three subject list, union list, central uh, union list, then um, uh, state and conference list study that. The next topic was about the language uh, in the Indian constitution, which language is the official language, why English was not removed or why English is still used as uh, a language. Uh, then uh, who were the main uh, people, uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, who was the chairman of the Indian constitution. Uh, please go through the chapter well. Thank you all.